Hi, this is Richard Blaine. Thanks for stopping by my easy cooking blog again. I know that in my last blog post, I wrote that I was going to start with the basics of your kitchen knives and uh, do a series of videos about your knives, different knife types, grind types, blade types, sharpening techniques. But today I just got the Jones to want to cook something for you. Just to let you know that I actually can cook, I'm not going to make anything too complicated. I was trying to think to myself what I would like to make for dinner. And uh, I came up with a bag of seafood mix. Oysters, clams, crabs, some squid, um, some scallops. And I was like, I could have just made pasta with a little olive oil and garlic and been happy with that. But I wanted to be a little more creative tonight. And I thought I would make a quiche. Uh, but I didn't want to make a quiche with a crust. I don't need the extra calories. I don't need the extra carbs. So I thought tonight I would share with you how to make a crustless seafood quiche. That'll be absolutely delicious, okay? Most of you have done quiche before, and maybe some of you haven't, but this is done without a crust. It'll be golden brown, it'll be delicious. It'll be really delicious. And I've got 15 minutes to show it to you, so let's get it on, and I'll show you how to do it. It's very simple, it's very few ingredients, and here we go. You'll need a mixing bowl, you'll need a spoon, naturally. You'll need to combine some ingredients first. Eggs, four. You need to combine the eggs. Now before I combine anything else with the eggs, I like to break the yolks. If I'm using a whisk, I'm using a whisk. But at this very moment, I don't need to because everything's going to combine together. So I'm going to mix these eggs together and I'll get them into a nice yellow consistency, even without the whisk. Just use a mixing spoon, cut them across, piece of cake. Alright. See, we've got the consistency, okay, we didn't need a whisk. To that, we're going to add some sour cream. This is for the richness. I'm using light sour cream, I don't want to use 100% whole sour cream, okay, but you got to have sour cream for the mix anyway, okay. I'm going to add one cup cottage cheese, more for the consistency. Okay, might as well leave the towel here because we don't use a script here at Good Cooking, and Easy Cooking. Okay, we're going to add Parmesan cheese. I'm actually using a five cheese combination, some mozzarella cheese. And I know you're wondering how much of each. And just stay tuned because after you see the recipe done here, the recipe will, right be, will be right below on my blog post. Flour, using all purpose flour and, and, some Japanese panko breadcrumbs mixed in with the all-purpose flour. That goes into the mixing bowl as well. Okay, And we mix this stuff together, we fold it over. I'll do a scullery wench style of mixing here. We'll flap it over. Get it all to mix. There you go. Fold it into it. There you go. Scrape those sides. Get those eggs up in there. Here we go. It'll take a second. We don't want to break up all the cheese and stuff. Okay. Little piece. Okay. But we want to mix this good. So, like I said, I'm going to use the scullery wench style of mixing. Get a good little workout here. All right. We have our basic ingredients all mixed up. This is a real easy recipe. Inexpensive to make. You know, a lot of times when I do this, I just look for stuff on sale that I can make quiches with. You know, the funny thing about a quiche, the funny thing about a quiche, and the funny thing about a frittata, is they're literally brother and sister. Okay, so now, we have the basic ingredients mixed, okay, nice and wet, everybody's happy, everybody's married. Now comes the seasoning, salt, black pepper. Well, I use a combination of three or four different peppers. This is black, green, red, and pink pepper. It's quite flowery in fragrance, quite aromatic. I just find that black pepper is very boring, so I use this triple combination. You can find it in most places. 
a little powdered garlic because we're going to do this somewhat in a Creole style. Onion powder. Two teaspoons Old Bay. Because I said we're going for somewhat Creole style. And because it makes seafood smell good, it makes seafood taste good. And we mix this in. Get this all mixed in. Okay. See? And mix those spices in there really well. It's not a complicated recipe. It's not an expensive recipe. But you want to make sure that you're mixing it very well. Okay. You don't want clumps or chunks of certain ingredients hanging onto one side of a bowl than the other. So you mix this really good. Okay. Really, really good. All right. Here we go. You know, the only difference between this and I, I, I digress for a moment, between this and a frittata to a certain degree is quiche being French, frittata being Italian, is that uh, most of the time when I make a frittata, I don't add any powder, uh, any flour or any panko breadcrumbs, although you could, I, I do add sour cream and cheeses and so forth, but the reason this is crustless is because the flour is already in the mix, and it's not as much as if you were to make a crust. And in a lot of cases, a lot of quiche crusts use shortening, and I don't like using shortening, if you were to make a, a standard uh, traditional French quiche crust that has shortening. I don't like using shortening. Okay, so here we have it. Here's all the ingredients mixed up. It has a nice consistency and it's gonna get better when it cooks. Now, to this seafood mix. This has crab, this has some squid, shrimp, oyster, some clam, some surimi, all right? Some scallops and some calamari. It's a nice combination. Now, here's the thing. To make a crustless seafood quiche, you could use anything. You could use strictly shrimp. You could use strictly surimi. You could make a crustless salmon quiche with either fresh salmon or canned red salmon, or at the worst, canned pink salmon. You can make a crustless seafood quiche out of any kind of seafood. It doesn't necessarily have to be a combination, but in this case, I decided to use this. So here we go, right into the mix. And I gently stir it around because I don't want anything flying out of here. The seafood mix comes raw. Okay. The seafood mix comes raw. Fold it in. All right. Fold it in. The seafood mix comes raw, as I stated, and so I had to cook it. Uh, I didn't cook it all the way. I par-cooked it about 75% of the way because the heat in the oven will cook it the rest of the way. Nah, about 75-80% of the way. I added no spices, just a little olive oil. And as the olive oil dissipated away and got caught up, just a little bit of water to steam it up a little bit. And you want to make sure that that seafood mix is in there really good. Really get that in there. My favorite part about the mixing bowl is spinning it around on my countertop. All right, here we go. Fold it in, fold it in. Turn it around, fold it in. Turn it around, fold it in again. You guys are really going to like this. I know I am. Okay, so here we have it. This, this is a crustless seafood quiche, although you don't want to eat it in its present form, and neither do I. So I'm going to clean my hands off really. Okay? Now, what I have here is I've used some Pam. Okay? I've used some Pam and I've sprayed it. This is a nine inch Pyrex pie dish. If you do a little reading and you read some reviews, you will find that the Pyrex pie dish makes the absolute best pies, best quiche over tin, okay, over metal spring form, over any other kind of pie dish, okay, the Pyrex is the best. So, we take this, we switch the position, and here we go. Put this in here, let's get it all in. Okay, we'll worry about leveling it off in a moment. Get it all. Get it all. All right. That's about as good as it's going to fly. Like that. All right. Clean that off. Now, 
You want to level it into the Pyrex. You want to make it as level as you can get. Okay, we're not going to put a cover on this. We're not going to put an egg wash on this. This is completely crustless. It's going to rise a little bit. It's going to rise just a tad. Okay. But when it comes out of the oven, when it comes out of the oven, there we go, nice and flat. Okay. When this comes out of the oven, when this comes out of the oven, you're going to let it stand for anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, you want to let it rest because it might sink back in, it might flatten a little bit, but you want it to rest. Um, and then you can either serve it warm or you can refrigerate it and serve it chilled later. Uh, there should be anywhere from six to eight healthy pieces here. Uh, you're going to put it in a preheated oven, 350 degrees, 45 minutes. Now every oven is a little bit different and I understand that. But as a basic guideline, 350 degrees, 45 minutes, and every 15 minutes or so, check it out. Make sure it's getting that nice golden brown color, and you'll have to wing it because everybody's oven is different. So I'm going to put this in the oven right now. Here we go. As I said, 350 degrees, 45 minutes, and we'll be right back. We'll see how it came out. See you in a little bit. Okay, so here we go. It's been about an hour. Like I said, every oven's a little bit different. Uh, considering the density of this, it took about an hour, give or take a few minutes, to get it nice and brown. But here we go. We're going to take it out and see what it looks like. All right. Come on, baby. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is crustless seafood quiche. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to make sure you see it. So I'm going to come over here and pick it up. There you go. There you go. You see that? Nice golden brown seafood quiche. Now I'm going to let this rest for about 15 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes. It's going to shrink in size as it cools, but it's going to be delicious nonetheless. This is an easy recipe, all right? You can make this any day of the week. It's healthy. It's nutritious. A crustless seafood quiche. Thanks for stopping by Easy Cooking Blog. I'm Richard Blaine, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.